Good morning, friends and fellow traders. This is Doug Campbell with Right Way Options, and this is the morning market preparation video for July 16th, 2020. Well, yesterday we finally got a little bit of follow through. We've had a week of kind of uh, move up, move down, move up, move down. And even though yesterday was a little bit of a whipsaw in several places during the day, we ended up holding in a bullish pattern, getting a nice follow through. So what does that mean for this morning? Well, how about we settle in and let's get ready for the Thursday edition of the Morning Market Prep video. So this morning, everyone, we have another reversal maybe coming our way um, with the futures pointing down. Last night, China produced a data that was positive but ended up selling off as tensions with U.S., the tensions between the U.S. and China governments are getting are growing and getting uh, more intense. Um, seems like day by day, um, and and that seemed to kind of push um, Asian markets lower last night. And then European markets are also lower this morning, um, and partially due to the rising numbers of infections here in the United States. Um, yesterday, we had a new record high, um, sadly, of viral infections, and we also hit a new record in daily death toll. So kind of a rough, uh, um, a rough day on the healthcare front, but, um, you know, Markets are trying to hold their head above water and trying to pretend that there's nothing really going on out here. But this morning we had some news. There was news from Bank of America. Uh, BAC reported uh, this morning and Bank of America is dropping uh, because of, um, I think it was $4 billion in loan losses due to coronavirus. And as these impacts um, start weighing heavily on the market. It's going to be interesting to see if some of these high prices in stocks can actually be supported by actual data. Um, we'll have to wait and see. Right now, if we take a look at the market, taking a look at the technicals of the Dow chart, setting everything else aside, if we take a look at this, we're looking at a little bit of a gap down open this morning. Nothing serious here because we're still holding above our big bullish candle here. We're still holding above that little breakout resistance in the chart. However, on the bearish side, we do have a problem. We had that island reversal over here in early June. And yesterday, we found out that the bears, at least here on the Dow, were willing to defend that area. And pushing down this morning, if that gains any traction, and I'm not saying that it will, but if that gains any traction and we start to slip back down into this range, it's going to add a little bit of technical complication to these charts. So kind of keep an eye on that. Now, one thing I will say is if we run a trend up here, we're still holding in our trend. So we don't have anything major to lose unless we break that trend to the downside. So far, don't see a willingness on the bears to do that. And the bulls have just been absolutely tenacious. What could change, though, is if we continue to get enough bearish data um, in some of these earnings reports to shift that sentiment. We'll have to wait and see if if that data continues to, to support these current prices or if it starts to um, erode some of these current prices um, in the market. Let's take a look at our moving averages. And if we look at our moving averages, notice that we're solidly above our 200-day moving average, which is that pink line, solidly above our 200-day moving average. Our 50-day moving average is still rising. we got a long ways to go before we cross back up, but um, it is bullish the way we're holding up in here overall. So let's take a look at the SPY. Now the SPY, much more bullish on the day in that it broke 
above its island reversal and held there by the end of the day. So you can see the bears were not able to really defend um, that island reversal here on the SPY. However, they were able to defend the top side of that island reversal and this resistance in the chart. So we pushed up there, just weren't quite able to get through got a little pushback. This technically is a hanging man pattern at a top. That can turn into a bearish situation. And one of the things that we're seeing this morning is that little bearish pullback this morning that could raise a little concern here in the market. But once again, I don't think it's serious until we really break down uh, these trends, break through that trend. We've got a real problem in the chart until that occurs. No particular problem, but we do have a pretty strong evidence that there are there is some bearish resistance here in the chart let's watch that closely let's take a look at the cues qqq was really lackluster yesterday and i think what we might be seeing is a little bit of recognition of the fact that this has just run a little bit too far too fast and a little bit of concern as to whether or not these companies are going to be able to support these prices in earnings. So we had a little bit of a lackluster move here yesterday. And honestly, what I believe is starting to happen is we're starting to see a little bit of move out of some of the tech sector and more into some defensive sector stocks in just a, an attempt to protect themselves from a potential pullback. We'll look at that here in just a second. But as you take a look at that NASDAQ chart, you can see that we just kind of struggled a little bit. However, we are still extremely bullish in that chart. There's no worries here and, and no signals here of imminent failure of the NASDAQ whatsoever. Just that little bit of concern, we might be seeing a little bit of profit taking, a little rotation there. And we're gonna get our first big tech um, earnings today with Netflix. We'll wanna keep an eye on this after the close. Netflix being one of the first techs, it'll be interesting to see. Now, Netflix has proven to do very, very well in the uh, midst of Corona, uh, so many people staying home watching, watching content, and um, it'll be interesting to see if that continues this quarter. So watch that closely. One thing we do know, it's very elevated in price, and they may struggle to be able to produce quality enough earnings to support those prices. So consider that carefully um, as we head into the close today and when we head toward that Netflix earnings. Let's take a look at um, IWM. And IWM ended up with a really good day yesterday and finally, finally was able to break above its 200 day moving average. So we held up here above that 200 day moving average and that, well, obviously we haven't been able to do that for some time now, um, largely due to the rise in the financials yesterday really helped out um, IWM. So keep an eye on IWM. It's trying to move up here. It's trying to correct things. But let's also keep in mind that um, we've got this 200 day moving average. We need to prove that we can hold that as support. If a pullback were to occur and we fail that again, that could be a problem. And remember the 500 day moving average above, which we have already failed at one time. So let's watch that closely as IWM kind of struggles around here and trying to improve itself um, in the market. Let's take a look at the VIX. You know, I got to tell you guys, this is still a concern for me. And although we're seeing markets set, you know, push up to highs and, and continued bullishness in the market, this continues to perplex me a little bit because we remain very elevated. It means that there is fear in the market. We typically don't see market highs when the VIX is this elevated. And although it pulled back yesterday, which was nice, it's still holding above its 200 day moving average and holding above a 27 handle, which is still relatively 
elevated um, overall. Now the good part of this is we are still downtrending here um, on those on that chart, but the, the negative part of this is we're still holding this support here in on the chart. So if the VIX were to start to see some fear spike up in here, that's where we could run into some problems. So watch that closely if that were to occur. And it just takes some earnings reports that could maybe make that occur. It's also going to be very important if we finally get enough energy to break this down, break down through there. That would be very important, finally relieving some of that fear, pressure in the market. That could be a really good thing. So watch that closely. This could go either direction. Then let's take a look at T2101. T2101, this has been a little bit of a concern for me as well. And as you can see, the absolute market breadth as we've been rising to new record highs has been in a rapid decline. That's a major concern. But yesterday, I think it was a bullish sign that we saw on a bullish day, we actually saw market breadth increase. We haven't been seeing that lately. Every time we get a selling move, we see an increase in market breadth. But this was one of the first times that we actually saw a market breadth increase in a rally. That may be good, a good sign for the market in that possibility that um, we could soon break the downtrend here and see more companies participating in this rally. And that's what we're looking at here is few companies participating in the rally. Um, which means that we only have a few kind of holding the entire market up. And that is a concern if those companies start to slide south. So watch that close. And then T2122, that four week new high, new low ratio. An interesting situation here where we gapped up yesterday and we literally pegged T2122 up here in the bearish reversal zone. And, um, well, I don't know. We Just a couple of days ago, we were down here in the bullish reversal zone. That occurred and we came right up here into the bearish reversal zone. Is it possible? Um, because we're up here in the bearish reversal zone, we soon see a move back down here to the bearish reversal zone. Certainly, with the kind of market whip and things that we have been dealing with, that is certainly possible with so much data coming our way. So let's watch that closely and just keep in mind that we are kind of extended here and elevated in this indicator. So watch that closely today. Anything I think is possible. We're going to have to remain very focused on price action and flexible because anything could potentially occur. Let's take a look at our economic calendar today because we do have quite a little bit going on on our economic calendar today that we are going to want to pay attention to. And as you can see, <clears throat> At 8.30 this morning, we're going to get our jobless claims. Right now, consensus is suggesting a little bit less in claims, still about 1.2 million or something like that. Uh, filing for claims is where consensus is. We'll want to watch that closely if they happen to miss on that could be significant for the market. Um, we also have the Philly Fed survey. I don't know if this one's going to move the market all that much. It, we're probably going to be more... Um, um, focused on this retail sales number and right now consensus is suggesting retail sales is just flying high in the corona um, virus land um, everybody's buying 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 like crazy so um, <clears throat> retail sales may be a major factor for today to help lift this market back up watch that number closely when it comes out at 8 30. we also have as you can see we've got business inventories housing market index the natural gas report, I don't expect those to move the market around much at all. I don't know why we have a 20-year bond um, on here as a big deal in the calendar, but they've marked it as 
could be a market moving event. We'll have to watch and see. And then we have several Fed speakers today to be made aware of. Treasury International Capital and the Fed balance sheet. So lots of data coming our way um, on this day, including a pretty, pretty good jump up in earnings reports. Our earnings reports today, we have about uh, 37 companies reporting and some notables that we want to pay attention to. First off, uh, <clears throat> Johnson & Johnson will be reporting today, and it looks like it's moving a little bit lower this morning. I can't tell you if that is um, after its report or not, just that it's moving lower. It may be in reaction with the rest of the market. I've already noted that we've got Netflix after the bell today. We'll want to keep an eye on that. We've got Abbott Labs reporting today, and it looks like they are gapping slightly higher here this morning, trying to break out here in this chart. So keep an eye on Abbott Labs with this gap up this morning, um, looking to get an all-time high and possibly break out in that chart. We've already looked at that BAC, BAC um, dropping on its earnings report with a $4 billion loan loss um, overall. <clears throat> we have Charles Schwab reporting today and it looks like right now it's looking to open about where it closed yesterday, so keep an eye on that. DPZ, DPZ, Domino's Pizza, it's been one of the favored um, stocks in the corona season here because everybody eating at home and it looks like they are reporting um, a good result today trying to gap up this morning um, on that report so watch that closely um, JB Hunt JB Hunt no report here yet it looks like we've got a wide bid ass spread in this chart um, that's going to report today. Keep an eye on JB Hunt. How our shippers are doing could be very important. We're also going to hear from Morgan Stanley. I'm not sure if we've heard from them yet, but we are looking at a, an open right now about where we closed as Morgan Stanley. Um, I think we're still waiting on that report, so watch that close. We also have uh, PPG. <clears throat> PPG would be one to watch today. Wide bid ass spread, no report here, as you can see, trying to break out of this little messy consolidation in here, but trying to break out and break above that this morning. We'll want to watch that closely. TSM, TSM reporting today. Looks like it's set to open about where it closed. It's been in a nice running rally here. Very, very strong here on the semiconductor stock. So keep an eye on that on its report. And last but not least, TFC is what I have for uh, somewhat notable <coughs> report this morning apologize for my clearing my throat um, allergy issues this morning and as you can see um, this has broken some downtrend it's been trying to move up in here so watch that report today um, a hold above that downtrend could set up that upside opportunity watch that carefully so <clears throat> with that everyone hey i want to wish you all a fantastic day i want to wish you great profits in your trading and if this is the first time you've seen these videos, if you guys could do me a favor, click that subscribe button on YouTube and also click that bell icon when it pops up so you'll be notified every time I post one of these videos. And if you do find these videos to be worthy, to be helpful, please do me a favor and click that thumbs up button and leave a brief comment that helps us continue to grow the channel. And I truly, truly appreciate it. You guys are awesome. Um, just went over 13,500 subscribers. Thank Thank you everyone you guys are awesome i never in my wildest dreams would have thought that many people would be interested in this kind of data so thank you so much you guys um, i truly truly appreciate it you humble me every day so let's take a look at some stocks that could be setting up and i want to remind you every time i talk about some stock setting up you want to be um um really careful in knowing that I'm not recommending any of these stocks for a purchase. 
um, they are meant as part of the education. They are meant um, as something to watch, take a look at, and see if it's something that fits you personally. So make sure and understand every stock I show in here is not a recommendation to buy or sell that security. Take a look at Coca-Cola. Coca-Cola had a nice pop-up move yesterday and pulled back. One of the things that I'm starting to see, and I mentioned this yesterday, is I'm starting to see a lot of defensive sector. This is that defensive sector stock those defensive sector stocks really starting to turn around trying to rally so if we're going to see those defensive se sector stocks turn around we want to start keeping an eye on them and coca-cola has always been one of my favorite traders i i make really good money trading coke and as you can see popped up and now any rest or pullback in here sets up an opportunity um, for a potential upside move. Keep an eye on that. Remember, it's going to report on 728. You'll want to keep an eye on that chart. Take a look at Monster. Monster Beverage is another one of those defensive sector stocks. And notice it's pushing up here, trying to break through this resistance. This pink line up here, I have set and as, an, as an alert. Anytime you see a pink line on my charts, it's an alert on my chart. And what I'm doing is I'm watching, waiting to see if this can actually hold this consolidation right in here and then find that way to pop through to the upside so watch that carefully it may have to wait for the coke earnings i'm not sure keep an eye on that monster beverage looking pretty good another one that i placed an alert on yesterday is kimberly clark here's another defensive sector stock Kimberly Clark holding up strong and you can see starting to rally and push this resistance level in the chart. Keep an eye on that if Kimberly Clark can start pushing through that level. Um, this is a, a big resistance area. If it pushes through, we could see a significant move to the upside. Keep an eye on that. Um, CLX. CLX. This one just makes total sense in um, Corona land in that we're looking for ways to disinfect and keep ourselves safe and CLX has been looking good. This little pullback here the last few days could set up that next opportunity to the upside just kind of like we did here. Boom. Boom. So watch that little resting pullback in here. Watch for that next opportunity that may pop up in this chart. Take a look at Mondelez. Mondelez. Here's another defensive sector stock rallying. Now we do have some resistance in this chart to be made aware of. There's resistance right in here. But what I like about this chart is this little double bottom area here. We've rallied up. Any rest or pullback in here that holds a higher low sets up that opportunity for upside move. Keep an eye on Mondelez. I'm also seeing things in like, uh, you know, General Motors. General Motors breaking its downtrend here. Break that downtrend, rally up, show me proof that you can hold some support here and then give me some buyers and then we have some upside opportunity in stocks like General Motors and a lot of those consumer cyclicals, consumer defensives are starting to come back up. So keep an eye on charts like that. I'm sorry I'm running out of time today. Um, Video is getting a little bit long. So I want to just say thank you everyone for being here today. I truly, truly appreciate you watching. And um, once again, please make sure and click that subscribe button. And um, if you guys have any ideas or suggestions, um, feel free to put those in the comments below. Everyone take care. Have a great day and we'll see you right back here bright and early Friday morning. Okay.